Hey everyone, Lance Earl here. I am often amazed. It's, it's incredible to me the way God delivers when we have a need. In my ministry, both in the prison system and our outreach to Mormons, we had a need for an acoustic electric guitar. And so I began to search. Our church worship leader had an ovation for sale. Uh, it was a nice guitar, the price was right, it sounded really nice. But ovations have a round plastic back and as it turns out, I have a round belly. And so to put that round back against my round front and try to play was a little bit like stacking eggs. I just hated it. So I gave that back and I began to search the internet for a guitar. As I was searching, I came across a YouTube video called Dumpster Guitar. It caught my interest, and so I clicked play. The story was about a man who happened upon an acoustic electric guitar in a dumpster that had a snapped off headstock. He went on to show how he repaired that guitar, and, and I think he did kind of a lousy job. I'm a woodworker and a little bit meticulous about such things, but he did show that it could be done and that a guitar injured in that way can be restored. It was just like a day or two later, I was on Craigslist looking at guitars and I came across a really nice Fender acoustic electric with a snapped off headstock. I thought, hey, I've seen the video. I know what can be done. I placed the call, talked to Maggie, Maggie Westover, the guitar owner. She's such a kind lady, and when she learned of our ministry and the purpose, the reason why we needed a guitar, she decided that she would like to donate this guitar to our ministry. So I picked it up and I went to work, and I would like to share the story with you of how God provides when there is a need. So here it is. This is the guitar that I brought home. As you can see, the headstock is snapped off. Here's a close-up of the injury. And as you can see, it's a little bit ugly, a little bit raw. And here's a view from the other side. The first thing to do was to get the tuning pegs out, which was a simple matter. I got those pulled and went to work to heal the wound. The first problem I had is that I didn't have a clean break. As you can see here, the, the wood snapped along the grain line until it got to the tuning pegs. And once it reached the tuning pegs, it actually snapped off, tore off. It left a very rough, ragged edge, and that edge simply would not glue together in any way that would be strong. So I grabbed a saw and I cut the tear out, the rough, ragged edge off of the guitar. I cleaned it up and this made it possible for me to correct the wound and have a good, strong joint. Also, the headstock had a partial snap along one edge and that had to be dealt with as well. I grabbed some acetone and a brush I cleaned up the mating surfaces to make sure that there would be no debris or grease or anything that would uh, stop the glue from adhering as strongly as possible. I used a screwdriver and toothpicks to work glue into the cracked area. Then using a brush, I painted glue on both surfaces along the grain line. I mated them up and clamped them into position. Everything seemed pretty good up to this point. This is the hardest part of any wood project for me. I have no patience. I want to glue it up and pull the clamps off five minutes later and continue the work. In this case, I had to wait 24 hours to make sure I had a good, tight glue joint. The next problem I had was I had to do something to fill the hollow area 
that ran between the two tuning pegs. You can't see it here, but you can see the crack in the original finish. Now remember, I had cut away the tear out, and so that means that underneath this crack line was an open channel that ran all the way from one tuning peg to the next. So I built a jig that would hold the headstock firmly in place. And once I had that jig up and, and the headstock in place and everything was firm and immovable, I routed a channel between the two tuning peg holes. The next step was to cut a hardwood block that I could glue into place to fill that void and give me solid wood and a solid glue joint to keep the headstock as strong as possible. Once that was fit, and, and it was a nice tight fit, I applied glue to the plug and also to the channel that I had cut out and inserted and clamped the hardwood plug. The next step was to remove the excess. In order to avoid damaging the headstock with the saw, I masked it and then I used a flush cut saw and carefully removed any part of the plug that extended above the headstock surface. The plug, of course, did invade the area of the original tuning peg holes, and so I grabbed a rat tail file and I reshaped those holes until they properly accepted the tuning pegs. So here you see the plug in place, cut off flush with the headstock surface. And then I had to deal with areas where certain parts of the headstock were missing. As you can see, the left and the right sides of the headstock had material gone, and that left big voids. I filled these voids with layer after layer of super glue. I would apply this in a very thin layer, let it dry. Then if there were any parts that were proud that extended above the headstock surface, I carefully shaved those away with a razor blade. This took many applications. And here you see the final headstock, and you can see that those voids are now filled with super glue. There were also some voids on the back of the neck that had to be filled the same way. After painting and sanding and painting and sanding, I still had a few very small voids in the areas where the super glue had been applied. I used a simple wood filler, sanded it smooth, and then began to apply multiple coats of gloss black paint, sanding each as I went with a very fine sandpaper and finally steel wool. I had a crazy idea for my own custom logo. So I grabbed the original Fender logo, pulled out the E and the D, added those to the front of the, the original logo, enlarged them a little bit, and I also created a template for the passage in Isaiah, Isaiah 49:25, which basically says, God is our defender and he contends with those who contend with us. I cut these templates from thin plastic. I used Elmer's spray adhesive to attach them to the headstock and then I masked everything. I sprayed them with a gloss white paint and I thought it was going to be amazing, but what I discovered is that the solvents in the paint apparently dissolved the spray adhesive and the white paint bled up under the templates. Uh, I just made such a mess. I was frustrated. I gave up on that idea. I just sanded the white off, repainted, resanded, and then used steel wool to finish the headstock in a gloss black. The next step was to level and dress the frets. You see the guitar had been used enough that the frets had some little dimples in them where the strings had worn unlevel areas. So I purchased a steel ruler, used my Dremel and cut a notch that would fit over each one of the frets allowing the ruler to lay flat on the fretboard. With the strings removed I laid the leveling bar on my fretboard spanning each one of the frets and adjusted the truss rod until the fretboard was perfectly flat. Next I had to sand the frets down to remove the dimples. 
I needed a leveling bar. Now these are available, they're very expensive. And for a one-time fix, I didn't wanna spend that money. So I just used my aluminum spirit level. I checked it, it was flat. And I attached a little bit of sandpaper to the bar. Now the way I did this, so that I could remove the sandpaper when I was done, is I actually applied masking tape to the top of the level, and then I used super glue and glued the sandpaper to the masking tape. That way the masking tape came off clean and didn't leave any nasty residue on my level. I used a Sharpie and I marked the top edge of every fret. And then I used the leveling bar and sanded them down evenly. You can see in this image that there's areas where the Sharpie has been worn away. These are the areas that were sanded. You can also see the areas marked, the dimples. And so I continued to sand until those dimples disappeared. The next step was to round off the top of the frets to take away the, the squared flat surface that the leveling bar had made. I tried a number of different things and nothing worked very well. And then I said to my wife, do you have an emery board? She came up with this one. It had uh, one side which was coarse, the other side which was more smooth, and it worked perfectly. So I masked the fretboard so I wouldn't damage it. And then I started with the coarse and carefully rounded off each fret. And then I just flipped the emery board, used the fine to polish the frets, and they came out beautiful. Now the final step was to really dress up that headstock. You see, even with the steel wool on top of the gloss paint, it left fine scratches. So I removed those scratches with a turtle wax polishing compound. I applied this several times and wiped it off and applied it again and wiped it off. And when I was done, I had a beautiful high gloss polish. And then just for good measure, I used some hard shell turtle wax and I waxed the area and just gave it a beautiful, beautiful high gloss sign. Now here's the finished product. I. I'm sorry that I didn't blow the dust off before I took this picture, but you can see that, that it turned out pretty nice. The original saddle had been lost somewhere, and so it didn't come with a guitar. I ordered a new bone-compensated saddle, and the last part of my project was to sand that down to adjust the action. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm kind of an innovative, make-my-own-tools kind of guy. So you can actually spend money for a string height gauge, or you can reach in your pocket and find a quarter. Now basically what I do is I set the quarter at the 12th fret. And what I wanna see is a tiny bit of string action. The string can be pressed down ever so slightly before it touches the quarter. That's the low E string. And at the high E string, I want it to be right at quarter height. And so this is how I've done this. I've done this with many guitars and it works every time. Again, your low E string, take it down until it almost touches the quarter, but you can still press the string and detect a small amount of movement before it lays on the quarter. And on the other side, on the high E, take it down to the quarter. That's my way of doing it. It works, it gives you a nice light action. It simplifies those those tricky bar chords and just just reduces a lot of stress on your hands. And it is uh, pretty reliable. You really have to get wild man nuts on the strings before they will start striking the frets. And so you can be pretty aggressive, but at the same time, nice light action. And here's the final image. Here is the new guitar hanging out in my front yard, getting a little sun and getting to know its big brother, my acoustic. I want to give a special shout out again to Maggie Westover. Thank you so much. I also want to give even a bigger shout out to God. You're there. When I need you, God, you are there. And it is amazing to me that you never turn your back on those who believe.
Hey, I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon.